Welcome back to the windy fields of Perthshire. And it's pretty cold as well. Uh, I am not alone. I am joined by Martin for a change. So no Albert, no Simon, no Pete, just Martin. I am back out on the field that produced the possible Roman Cistercius, which I really think it is a Roman coin. Um, so we're back on that field. Uh, we've got other options around. We've got the fields that have produced all the musket balls. We've got the big hammered field directly behind me. Uh, the George III silver field behind me as well. And then we've got fields over in that direction, which is where both Simon and I got silver the last time we were out. As ever, a huge thank you for 40,000 subscribers, 6.5 million views and my third birthday. Over the moon. And Simon is delighted with his channel, which has gone to, I think, about 1,200 subscribers already, which I think took me about 14 months to achieve. And he's done it in 14 hours. So thank you all. Right, let's go and see what treasures we can find. It's only taken two and a half minutes and we have the first digger. It's a pretty good 86, 88. Let's make the screen bigger. 86, 87. A coin to begin with would be fantastic. We might be out. Maybe. No, maybe not. Somewhere in there. Oh, we moved it. Oh. What is there? Just moved my speed out the way. No, that was the speed. Look at this there. Ah, there's something. Oh well, I thought we maybe had a coin there, but it's not. It's a, a washer. Well, first hole, first target, and it's a copper washer. But it's a thing. Right, onwards. I did wonder how long it would take, and I think an 84 it is. We have a musket ball. Let me put my glove on to give it a wee rub. So, as you will know if you watched some of the other videos, we had loads of musket balls. I mean, I think in one day alone, I think we had 30 between us. Again, this one, it doesn't look like it's been fired. And I did a bit of research having found the first day when we got about a dozen or 15 between us. I did some research and apparently there was a camp somewhere in this area during the time of the Covenanters in the 1600s. Um, and that was a time of religious persecution when Presbyterians were effectively hunted by the church. They were outlawed. And uh, it's interesting that we're getting all of these musket balls. And we have had a few coins from the era of Charles I, Charles II, but also James VI. So I do wonder, could there have been a little campsite here? Well, we'll keep on hunting. It was a screamer of a target. 88, to be honest, I expected potentially junk, but we've got a horse buckle. Probably off of a bridle. And not massively old. It looks like it's been silvered or tinned or plated in some way. Maybe 100, 150 or so years old, but a nice wee thing. If you think it's older, then let me know in the comments below. We have musket ball number two. So there is number one in there. But look at number two. Sizably bigger. Considerably bigger. But both made of lead, probably from the both the same sort of period, 16 or 1700s, and both potentially within uh, the realms of my possible camp. This one though has definitely been fired. Still. It's a good find. Three decent objects and we've only been going for about 35 minutes. Now this one is the best signal of the day so far. 
91. Bit of a screamer. Nice soft soil. Well, now it doesn't sound quite so good. So it might not be great after all, but we'll see. Well, it's green. It's big and green. Maybe some sort of case. Maybe even another Vesta. Alright, I'll give this a clean up and get back to you. Well, can you guess what it is? <laughs> I was trying to pull this out, wondering why it wouldn't come out. I thought it was mud and roots, but it's not. That's the end of a paintbrush. That's the bristles, or what's left of them. So there you go. I found a paintbrush. Ah, uh, probably a hundred years old, give or take. This one was the weakest of targets, coming through 88 to 91, and now it's out, it's a ear-blowing target. Kind of hoping for a coin, but... It's looking awful small, what's that? That's it. Oh, it's a thimble. Is it a silver one? Well, I'm not sure, but it's definitely a thimble. Fantastic. Uh, it could be silver. There's a few glints coming through. But let me get this cleaned up off camera and get back to you. Fantastic. Oh, terrible news. I was using my little les tool for something that I shouldn't have been. I was trying to prise the mud out and trying to straighten the thimble and I snapped the end off it. Oh, I'll need to sharpen that up. Um, but it is a thimble. Alas, it's not silver. It's uh, aluminium, I believe or aluminum, um, and it's a type, I think I've had this one before, maybe even off this same field, um, something bred, and I think it's an advertising thimble, and it's, if I remember right, it's for some sort of bread paste, or some sort of food stuff anyway, and it's from around about the turn of the century, about 1900s, 1910, 1920, but it's a thing, brilliant. Just said to Martin I'm going to make my way to that tree so we can have a wee bite to eat because I'm starving and uh, right here I got what I think is my first coin but I think it's a real mess I'm going to be struggling to get any detail off this it looks pretty toasted but it looks about the size and shape of a half penny possibly Yes, I think we're in trouble, but I'll do what I can and get back to you. Amazingly, I've managed to identify that. You can just make out the head of George V, Gorgeous George, looking to the left-hand side. You can also see GRA, which is the second part of Gracia, De Gracia, by the grace of God. And you can also see the start of the word Brit, King of the Britons. So there you go, George V. It is a half penny. And this is the reverse. There is a Britannia on there somewhere. But it's not looking in great condition. But it'll be sometime between 1910 and 1936. And it's coin number one. It wouldn't be a day out with a Scottish detectorist without finding something slightly weird. What do you think that is? It's a thing... It's maybe some sort of pewter or some sort of alloy. But you can see it's kind of kind of hollowed out slightly, but it doesn't go all the way through. And then again on that side. So mystery object. Clearly it's been something, but I've no idea what. So if you know, comment below. Suddenly a bright sunshine comes out. This one was a 68. And that looks pretty round to me, but it cannot be a coin. Is that a massive button? I think it is. I think it's a huge tomback. It's a massive ton tomback. Absolutely gigantic. I got another absolutely huge tomback, about the same size as this, on this uh, same field last time, or last couple of times ago that we were here. Look at the size of that. That is someone seriously showing off with the size of their buttons. Maybe they had a complex. But that is Georgian, probably from around about 1760 to 1820. George the Third era. And you can see it's very shiny. 
almost silver coin like and that's often what you think when you find them this way up you think oh I've got an early milled silver because it's that lovely grey colour that's a nice find I'm happy with that one of the oldest things I've had today this one was a screamer just about to stick the camera on and I realised I think that's it on the surface and I think it is that's metal no oh, that's interesting a little bit of furniture decoration, maybe, or leather work. There's two sort of clasps or something there where it would maybe attach to leather or wood. And a little spiral design. Copper, copper alloy, and probably, I don't know, 1800 through to maybe 1900. But if you know, comment below. Nice wee thing. Well, it's lunchtime. I'm on the cheese and tomato. Cheese and ham. Cheese and ham. And uh, we've both got our iron brews. The national drink of Scotland. So we'll have a wee break. It's not been the best of mornings so far, but, um, well, it can only get better. So we're going to go into the field next door, which is the one where both Simon and I got bits of silver. Simon got the little fob chain, or the little watch chain fob. And I got the back of a pocket watch. So, hopefully there's some stuff to be had and also in this field at the very top is where I got that big chunky copper alloy ring which I put into the museum which they say is 16th or 17th century so let's see if there's any more to be had so far in the new field I've had two targets one lead one aluminium this one was an 82 and do you see what I see it's round and it's green now is it a button or is it a coin? Surely it's got to be a coin at 82. But it's not. It's a button. Well, that's a very high readout for a button. But maybe it was plated or something. Might be a bit of decoration on there. I'm going to give it the old bendy thumb treatment. Oh, get you in the shop might help. Give it the bendy thumb treatment and get back to you in a wee second. There's definitely something on there, but I just can't tell what it is. So, over to you all. If you know, then comment below. Possibly a head? Possibly a figure? Um, I'm really not sure. But, it's probably going to be around 200 years old, I'm guessing. So, not a bad start. My first piece of confirmed cutlery. It's been silver plated, you can see at the end it's got... A little flash of silver to it, copper underneath. And there is a little couple of marks on it for a maker. But it's the tip of a, probably a spoon or a fork. Maybe a hundred, a couple of hundred years old. And this one is singing like a canary. 89, it has to be a coin. Has to be a coin. And shallow as suspected. Come on, coin number two. I think we've got a clod. We have got a clod. Let me stick the carrot between my legs. Oh. Oh, have I made a mess of it? No, I haven't. It's still there. Oh, this wind is just a nightmare. Oh, there's something green, and it's not a coin because it's too small. It might be a. Oh, it's a washer. Don't believe it. It's a washer. Oh, oh, well. Uh, this one was a very dodgy 6064. Surely has to be a button. And don't call me surely. Well, is it a button? Is it a coin? It could be a coin, you know. It might be a coin. But it is crusty as anything. So I doubt I'm going to get anything off that, but let's at least try and figure out if it's a button or a coin. Amazingly, it's a coin. It's about the size of a half penny, but it's absolutely crusted away to to death. That's one to soak in Coca-Cola at some point, maybe, to see if we can get any detail off it. But, well, it's a coin. Coin number two for me. Uh, this one virtually on the surface, and we've got a little figurine, or the lower part of a little figurine. Almost looks like they're wearing a wee loincloth or a wee pair of uh, shorts or something. And there's the backside, literally. Um, 
and it's made of, I think, lead. I mean, could it be bronze? I don't know. No, I think it's lead. Um, but difficult to tell. The colour's a bit mishmash. Uh, I can't quite get the weight right, but yeah, it's a little thing. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe a toy soldier or something from the late, uh, late twentieth century, something like that. Or sorry, late, uh, late nineteen hundred. Oh God, I'm losing the ability to speak. Maybe from the end of the 19th into the early 20th century, possibly. But yeah, probably some kids' pride and joy. But let me know if you think it's some sort of Greco-Roman figure and it's 2,000 years old. Uh, this one, 73, and I'm thinking a button. Oh, well, look at that for an imprint. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's a very, very clear... Stamp on there. It must be a button, is it? Yeah, it is. There's two holes there in the centre. What have we got on that side? Well, I'll give this a wee clean up and we should have a phenomenal imprint for a maker. I'm hoping. Unfortunately, this side is pretty toasted. So this is the outward side, but thankfully the inner part has been protected and look how good the writing is. So at the very top, reading backwards, it says London... And down here, it says Furman and Son Limited. And I've had a lot of buttons from Furman and Son Limited. They were active, as it says, in London. I'm sure they had somewhere in Birmingham as well. And they made a lot of buttons during the 18 into the early 1900s. Can't remember if they're still in existence or not, but this is probably a two-piece military button. They made a lot of military buttons, so... Probably First or Second World War era, 1914 to 18 or 39 to 45. Uh, this one is an 83-85. It's out the hole now. Oh, that's round. A wee bit of greenery there. Oh, I can see an eyes only find as well, just above my hand. Hopefully you've spotted that too. Is that a coin or a button? Uh, hard to say at the moment. But it's another real crusty one, not in the best of condition. It could be a coin, you know. All right, I'll give it a rub a dub. And also, back while well, we're here, let's have a wee look at the eyes only find. We've got a glass stopper. Well, it's not a stopper. Well, it is. It's a. Well, it might be a marble, I suppose. There you go. Got a lovely marble off this field before, which was a, a brilliant red colour. But there you are. Probably 100, 150 years old, I'm guessing and either a child's toy or a stopper for a cod bottle. So let me know. I think it is a coin and it's completely toasted. Just a couple of letters I can make out on the edge. And you know what? That could actually be a spendable. That could be a spendable one pence. And it shows you just how quickly modern coins these days, made of cupra nickel and all sorts of low quality metals, how quickly they degrade in the ground. Not going to be much for people to find in a couple of hundred years from our era, that's for sure. But at least I got my lovely little stopper as well. And it's another coin, so they all count. Another shallow one, 84, and we've got another musket ball. So I think that's number three or maybe even number four that I've had so far today. So they keep on coming. Just having a wee catch up with Martin. And he comes over and he says, look, I've got this weird thing. I don't know what it is. And I immediately looked at it and said... That's a horse's head. 100% it is a horse's head. There's the mouth, there's the bridle, there's the mane up there. So that is a horse's head. And it must be made of bronze, possibly. But, well, we'll give it a wee rub-a-dub and get back to you. Trying to get you in the light a little bit, but keep you out the wind. They're giving it a wee rub-a-dub, a wee dust with a brush. And it is definitely a horse, as suspected. Now the question is, how old is it? Is it red rum or is it Eucephalies? <laughs> um, I mean, who knows? But it's apparently hollow. And you do wonder how on earth these things get out into a field. So if it's some sort of ancient relic, then do let us know in the comments below. I'm sure Martin will be sending a picture of this to the museum to see, to see what they think in two or three years' time. Brilliant. Well done, Martin. That is your find of the day. In fact, it's the find of the day. I've got another coin. 74, this one. It's a halfpenny, and I can just see the letters VI at the bottom left. It's Victoria. 
So Queen Victoria is a bun head, which will put it sometime between 1837 and about 1890, which is lucky because uh, there's no date on the back. The back is pretty toasted, but potentially a half a pint to a pint of um, to a pint of beer. And actually, there's a two there at the bottom. So you can see Britannia seated and is definitely a number two, but all the other numbers are gone. So something with a two at the end. Or, yeah, it would have to be something with a two at the end. So there you go. Half a pint, maybe even a full pint, depending on when it's from. Oh, we've got a possible military badge here. It's a little bit bent and buckled. Let's just slightly tease that open just to get the mud out. Definitely looks like there's going to be writing on there. It is. It's going to be some sort of badge. Look, I can see the little loops coming through, or a little loop. The other one must have broken off. But we've got a military item. Question is, where's it from? Lancashire was the last one, which is a long way away from the fields of Perthshire. Sorry about the, the light and the film quality. It's a nightmare trying to stay out of the out of the wind and get you in the light. Well, it's Scottish. I can tell that because it says the word Scottish. Possibly the Scottish horse. And I think it is. Which is appropriate given what Martin just found recently. So it is. It is the Scottish horse. Which was a cavalry uh, detachment. Now, date-wise, it's probably First or Second World War. I'm thinking probably First because... By the time we got to the Second World War, we'd become a bit more mechanised. But it's definitely a thing. And it's a nice thing at that. So I'll probably be able to straighten that out when I get home. But I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. And it's probably a cap badge or a lapel. Or maybe even an epaulette. Is that the right way you say it? On your shoulder. But either way, that's a nice thing. So if you know, comment below. This had a readout of 72. And it's a little token again. It says in the centre half a pound, half a pound in weight. So this must be like an advertising token or something, you know, like a bonus token. You win this as a prize or it would come with a newspaper or something and in return you could then get half a pound of whatever the product is. A flour or eggs, well it wouldn't be eggs, butter or something like that. But blank on the back. And a little bit of detail on that side. I'll try and clean that up when I get home, see if I can get any detail off it. But a very nice find. Probably 1850, 1900s. Haha, I think my first doorknob of the day. Small one, maybe off a drawer, but strange little three lines in the middle. Not sure where that is. This was a shallow 184. I just kicked it out rather than dug it. Somewhere over here. Well, it could be a coin, I did wonder. And it is. It's another coin, it's another... Well, it's a penny, I think it's the first penny I've had. Looks in marginally better condition than all the other coins. We are in a different part of the field. And I think we will get some detail off that, finally. Brilliant. Oh, there we go, I can see a head already. I think it's Victoria coming through. It's the best coin I've had today. So, as you can see there, the young head, the bun head of Queen Victoria, looking to the left. And it's from the middle sort of part of her reign. 1874 is the date on the reverse. One penny. And in 1874, it was about a half a penny for a pint. So we've got two pints of beer. Happy days. Not sure what this is, but it is silver or silver plate. You can see decoration on it. You can see the silver coming through both sides. Little flowers, little swirls. Maybe it's a piece of cutlery, or a bit of a piece of cutlery, possibly. But, if you know, comment below. A jittery target. It came through anywhere between 79 and 86. And it's out now. Well, it looks kind of interesting. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, it's a wheel. Well, I thought it might have actually been part of a watch. But it looks like a lead a wheel off a toy car, or maybe even a motorbike, actually. Um, hard to say. 
could be a car, could be a motorcycle, but some sort of children's toy made of lead. Simon got the toy car off this field last time, so similar era probably, 1900s, early 1900s to maybe 1930s or 40s. Brilliant. At last, one worthy of a live dig. Solid 87. Definite coin potential. Thought it was going to be shallower than that though. Is that a big lump of lead? I think it was. Let's just double check. Yes. Oh, it's not. It's worse than lead. It's a lead. Aluminium. Darn. After the last one that I called as a coin, it turned out to be a tin can. I'm going to stay quiet about this one. But it's a very nice high pitch 92 all the way through to a 99. Might be out. Are we? No. No. Well, I've totally missed it. I'll get back to you in a second. I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was on the speed or something. But I just suddenly, as I flipped this, I just saw a green disc. I don't think it's a coin. It looked too fat. Yeah, that's not a coin. Or it could be a coin. Oh, it's not. It's a great big washer. I was going to say, it could have been a, a cartwheel penny, but not with a big hole in the middle, it's not. Oh well. These little footsteps here, this is Simon, the last time he was out. And I don't know how on earth he's managed to miss this, but he has. Now, I don't even know what it is. It's like a little figure with a little hat leaning forward. And it looks a bit like a, like a nut. Or some sort of cap, but... Don't know how on earth you managed to miss that, Simon, because it was an ear-blowing target. But there you go. If you know what it is, then comment below. I'm inside the last hour, and sometimes that's when you get your very best target. This is a very nice 91-92. Right about there. Now, unfortunately, my pinpointer battery has run out. And I forgot that I gave Albert my spare. So I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Although I think I might see it already. I think that's a big bit of lead. Maybe. Right there, it is. A great big piece of lead. Ah, well. Well, welcome back to the Isle of Mull off the west coast of Scotland. And I've hit some technical difficulties. I am away celebrating my 45th birthday. And uh, my wife has allowed me to do a little bit of video editing so I can post a video on Sunday, which is tomorrow. Uh, in the background, incidentally, you'll see the islands of rum, egg, muck, the Isle of Skye and also the Ardnamurkin Peninsula, which is the sort of furthest western tip of Scotland, or at least the mainland of Scotland. And uh, I've had some technical difficulties, unfortunately, with the video. Um, I've lost the final five or ten minutes, which also included me finding silver. It was a silver uh, milled coin of George V. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, cut it short. And that is the extent of our treasures. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope the audio isn't too bad because it's a little bit wet and windy, as you can see. But we've had great weather up until now. Um, so I can't complain. So thank you as well because a number of you have sent a few gifts to wish me a happy 45th, which is incredible. So thank you so much. I'll be getting in touch with you all individually. And uh, I'm going to cut it there before I get soaked. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you're not already subscribed, then please hit that button.
Oh, and I know what you're all thinking. There is no way he looks 45. Well, I appreciate it. And also, this is where we're staying. I thought I would show you the house. And as you can see, the weather is getting even worse. These are our nearest neighbours. There we are. We've got some free-ranging sheep. But it's an old, old house, an old fisherman's house. Uh, we're on the western side of the Isle of Mull. And uh, originally there was a township here. There were about three or four hundred people living here in the 17 or 1800s. And now it's just us. All the houses are ruined, one of which you can see right there. So I would love to metal detect here, but unfortunately it's a scheduled monument. So that means it's protected. But another time. So take care.